Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Dino Dodge by Blue Gear Games. It plays about 20 to 30 minutes for two to five players and is for ages eight and up. And in the game Dino Dodge, you are playing as a dinosaur attempting to avoid extinction. Meteors are falling across the land and you are trying to avoid said meteors, avoid the lava spread terrain, and make sure that your opponents end up extinct before you because the last dinosaur remaining is the one who will get to rain for mm, past the extinction point. Uh, will you be able to survive? We'll find out in the game Dino Dodge, and I'll explain how to set the game up, how to play, and of course, what I think about the game. To set up the game Dino Dodge, it's pretty easy. You're gonna go ahead and take the two tokens that you have, place them in the middle of the board area, take the deck, and set aside up to five move you cards, depending on the number of players. I'm playing a four player game here, so I set aside four of them. Then I'll take the rest of the cards, shuffle them up, and deal four extras to each player. Give every single player a player reference card, and of course a dinosaur card. They're gonna be used both front and back. Here's the dinosaur, and of course the player reference. And then give each of those players their corresponding dinosaur. So the blue character is going to be getting the blue Triceratops. Uh, then you're also going to be taking the meteor deck. Take the deck and shuffle the deck. After that, you're then going to take the land tiles and place them out randomly along the middle area of the board, right outside the deck of cards. As you can see here, there are eight spaces and each space has a symbol. Don't worry about that just yet. Take one of the uh, boom cards and give it to the starting player. The starting player can be the last person to face extinction, or maybe the last person to uh, avoid death narrowly, or maybe something more kid-friendly, the person who enjoys dinosaurs the most. And then go ahead and have them place it on top of one of the land areas on the board. Additionally, every player in turn order will be placing down their dinosaur in any area of the board they choose. And of course, you are allowed to place dinosaurs on the same space if you would like. Once that is done, give the first player, the starting player, the token, and make sure it's set on the, uh, I guess the dinosaur bones marker to begin the game. And then each player is going to begin the turn, and that is all you need to do to set up the game. When beginning the game, go ahead and have the active player start by placing down a giant meteor. Now, if the might meteor has already started because it is the first round of the game, you're going to skip that phase. But after this, every single other phase, each player will take a meteor and make sure that you place it on the highest point above the land tile of your choosing. So if there are numbers one, two, and three, place it on the three because they will be rotating down from two to one to boom as the game progresses. And you want to, of course, not be under that when the boom happens. Then you are going to do a draw check. If you have no cards in your hand, you are going to then be able to draw up to five cards. It's a challenge to get to this point and be able to do so because your cards are a resource, but if you can do so, you're in the clear. Then you have player actions, and that's pretty simple. Everybody should go ahead and at this point, make sure that their move you cards are placed into their hands, face down, and maybe even shuffle their hands so people don't know what cards are in your hand. And then the player, the active player, this guy here, is going to go ahead and play any number of cards that they so choose. The first thing you can do uh, with actions is you can just go ahead and play the card and do what it says. Like this one, for instance, says move an enemy and bump, which means if you are the blue character and you can want to move an enemy, you can move it either clockwise or counterclockwise on the board. And then, of course, you can choose uh, to bump said uh, said player if there's a player in your area. Now, I'll show you how that works. So if I had a, my, my blue character here and I had the purple character here and the blue character says move an enemy and bump, I can move this guy here and it would then bump this character just like that. That's one of the actions. Another one is you can move yourself and bump. So I could go ahead and move myself and bump. And then, of course, you can also just simply move an enemy and uh, finally, you can go ahead and move yourself. And those are pretty much the main actions in the game. You can play any number of these cards that you want, but remember that these cards are a resource for you, so be careful and only use them sparingly if you need to or if you want to take a daring risk. Two other types of actions. One is to take your specific player action, which means you're going to need to play two of the same card. When you do that, you'll do what your character says, which is going to basically move a certain number of spaces. Then if you're in range of enemies, you can do go ahead and move them as well. And then you will draw a card for playing um, a move, uh, basically playing your uh, active ability. And you can go ahead and place cards into a discard pile in the center of the board.
Uh, the next thing and last thing that you can do is you can use land spaces. Now, when you use land spaces, you're going to go ahead and play a card for the location that you're on. If you have that symbol, like for instance, if I wanted to use this location, I have to go ahead and have that symbol in my hand, which is in the top left hand card of all uh, top left hand corner of all cards. And what they're going to let you do is some of them will let you rotate the boom from a lower direction or a lower angle, a lower number to a higher number. Others will let you swap lands out. Others are going to let you swap meteors around the board. And there's another one as well. Um, then the final action that you can do is you can spend two cards of the same exact symbol type, like these guys here, so if I was here, and you can go ahead and move uh, or activate an, a land that you're not on, but it's going to cost you two of the same symbol as opposed to just one of the one that you are on. And so if I did that, I could then use the land ability of this one here or this one here, uh, even though I am not on that current location. You can then go ahead and pass your turn. Then we're going to come to the draw phase, which or the draw check, I should say, where you're going to go ahead and draw a card if you have no cards in hand, or you can choose not to. And then you're going to go ahead and pass your uh, phase by flipping this token over to the falling skies phase. During this phase, all the meteors are going to tick down by one from the highest number available to the next lowest number by turning it just like that. And once you go ahead and do so, if any meteors are on the boom, you move to the booming phase. But first, for every player underneath a meteor, provided they have less than five cards in their hand, they'll get to draw a card from the deck and place it into their hands. So it's kind of like a how daring are you trying to avoid the meteor and all. Then, of course, after everybody uh, is done drawing their cards, you'll move on to the boom phase, provided that anybody is under a booming meteor. So... If I were to start here, if I were to be here, this character here would draw a card provided they're able to. And if this was on the boom phase, uh, then this character is going to need to play a card in order to escape the booming meteor. If, for instance, the land had already been boomed and looked like this, a lava tile, then you're going to actually need to play two of the same type of card in order to avoid the booming meteor. And you must evade the meteor in order to survive because you're going to be extinct in this game if you end your turn on a lava tile or if a booming meteor hits you and you're not able to avoid it. So this player here, the purple player, would have to go ahead and select a card like move you, move out of the booming meteor, We'll check to see if anybody else is under a booming meteor. And if not, then this is going to be discarded and this land is going to go ahead and get flipped over. And that's the phases of the game. Take the player phase, then go ahead and move on to the sky is falling, the falling skies phase. After that, you're going to check to see if anything booms. If it does, then you're going to go ahead and boom those areas. If anybody can't escape, they're extinct. And if at the end of the player phase's, uh, player's turn on the player phase, if somebody's in the lava space, they are extinct as well. The next player will start, take a meteor, flip it over, choose one of the locations and place it down and then begin their action phase. And that's pretty much how you play the game Dino Dodge. So we played the game Dino Dodge on a live stream and I'll actually have the video link down below so that you can go ahead and watch the stream to see us playing the game. Uh, this game here is a bit of a luck and a little bit of chaos and also a little bit of strategy all mixed into one. You are attempting to kind of hide underneath meteors and gather cards because cards are a resource or you can take a big risk and just have no cards in hand and hopefully at the beginning of your next turn, if you survived, draw back up to five. But you need to make sure to be careful because it might not be worth it, especially with more players, because you might not see your turn for a bit. And if you get exploded, you'll have to find a way of escaping the meteors. Now, always remember that if you're under a meteor in any phase, you'll at least get to draw one card. So you have a chance of avoiding that meteor, but it's always still going to run you a risk. Player abilities are extremely useful when you need to use them, discarding two of the same card, allowing you to activate it by moving either a long distance or moving yourself and other players to make them have to deal with something nasty like an exploding meteor. And of course, the ability to just utilize the land tiles, which are useful, but very specific times. And the locations can basically increase the amount of um, time a meteor takes to blow up or uh, mo rotate a meteor away from you to somewhere else and of course moving land tiles to escape the meteors as well it's all about timing and precision in this game and watching where other players place and of course where they move now the luck of course comes into the type of cards you have in your hand you're usually going to want to have at least one move you card 
in your hand, which is why you start with one, because otherwise you're going to be in trouble when the meteor comes and you have no way of escaping it. Uh, the game runs about 20 to 30 minutes and ends uh, pretty abruptly when a player is basically stuck in the middle of all this lava and can't escape it on their turn, they're out. Or if they're on a lava space and a meteor comes and hits them, mm, they're also out. And you're in, you have to have those cards that, you, uh, that are required for you to escape. And sometimes you might have the ones you need, but there is a lot of combinations that will allow you to have certain things you didn't even think about. Oh, I could actually use the land abilities. I have these two pairs, or actually I have these two, um, I have two pairs to move my dinosaur two spaces as opposed to the needed one in order to escape with my dinosaur power. And each dinosaur power has its uniqueness. I prefer the dinosaurs that move two as opposed to one. And of course, the, other than the ones that move uh, uh, the enemy's two spaces. <laughs> Overall, it's a really fun game. This is going to be kind of like mm, kids level game, maybe a little bit to the adult area, definitely a family style game, one of a pusher luck. Uh, the dinosaur art is really kid friendly, very well done, very vivid. I really enjoyed the artwork, especially for the locations, all these tile areas, really, really pretty and very, very vibrant. And of course, the box, this is a prototype game, so I'm not going to give it any dings for the box. I'm excited to see what they kind of come up with with the box area here, but as for all the cards, very light, very bright, and very fun type of a game. Uh, we all had fun playing on the live stream. I, of course, it was it was quite a challenging, like, I, I, I lost every time first, and then, of course, Max won both times. So, I mean, obviously, there is a strategy to the game as far as knowing what cards to play and when and how to mess your opponents up. Uh, it can be quite aggressive, so if you don't, don't want to play a game that's pretty competitive and pretty potentially mean because you can push people into lava and thus end their game. It's a rather quick game, so player elimination isn't that relevant. By the time somebody loses, most people are going to be going down right after him or her anyway, so I don't really give it dings on that. And oh, the one last other rule is there's always going to be at least one tile on the board that is not going to be exploded. It's a place of safety, but of course on your turn you have to always play one card at least, and so because of that you might have to move yourself or at least move an enemy and try and stay on that safe spot. spot. It's all about like kind of cradling around the glacier as everything else is burning around you, which I enjoy. And if you don't mind, then of course it's, it's got a lot of like unique uh, twists and turns, things that you can utilize. Maybe for kids, it might be a little bit complex to play the first game or two because you can use lands, you can use the land tiles, you can use your different cards in hand, which is pretty easy. And then of course your player ability. You know, some kids might take a little bit longer to gather that, but I think they're going to enjoy the fact that they're going to be booming on their opponents, exploding them up in this dinosaur extinction game. Overall, it's a very solid little family-friendly game for kids, very gateway-ish, and if it's something that you think you'll enjoy, I strongly suggest you take a look down below, link in the description, where you'll see it on Kickstarter. Blue Gear Games, like Dino Dodge, of the two games I've made so far, this is my favorite of, the, of both of them. I really enjoyed this one, a lot of fun, and everybody else around the table had fun as well. Well, thank you guys for watching their Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Dino Dodge. If you're interested, like I said before, there's a link down below in the description. Or if you'd like, you can go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and the bell button notification to go ahead and see more videos from us, just, just like this one here. You can also see our live stream every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST, where you can watch us play games literally just like this one every Wednesday. Uh, we play tons of fun games and we have audience interaction. Sometimes we have giveaways. Go ahead and check the website on unfilteredgamer.com, where we do written reviews of games we usually don't review on the channel here so if you're interested in more uh, written reviews maybe you don't have the time to watch videos or maybe you're you know, doing a break or something like that at work well there you go you can go ahead and watch the check out those those uh <laughs> written reviews by brian and the guys anyway guys that's pretty much all i got for you moonshell is going to be manufactured on the 6th now that's our confirmation so let's see i was thinking hopefully today but it's going to be about four or five days is when they start manufacturing and then we can go get into shipping it shouldn't be that long now i'm excited Right, thank you so much, and as always, I look forward to uh, basically not extincting with you. Like you should be the ones who do the extincting, and I'm gonna stay on the on, on, on the safe tile. <laughs> Next time.